Do you guys want to know how you can use AI image generation to make manga panels that look like this? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that today. So I've already gone ahead and pre-generated all the files that I needed for this. I'm going to leave a link to download these files as a zip file in the description below if you wish to download them. Um, but yeah, these are the components I used to make this image and I'm going to explain how I did it and show you guys how you can do it too. So what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need to choose any AI image generator that has the anime style or whatever style you're going for. You can also do like comic books and stuff like that. I'm going to be using Stable Diffusion today. Now, the particular version of Stable Diffusion I'm going to be using though is going to be running off Run Diffusion. If you guys don't know what Run Diffusion is, I'm going to be making a tutorial on this very, very soon. Basically though, it's a cloud service that hosts different AI models that you can install into um, and basically connect into without having to have a GPU or any required hardware on your end. And you get really high end speed and generations on an instance of like automatic 111, Inverk AI or Comfy UI. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna be using the Mist Tune anime model. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to download that. And we're also going to be using the add detailer extension. You can essentially uh, go into your stable diffusion, click load from under the extensions tab, type in a detailer. And if you haven't got it installed already, it'll come up here, but obviously I already have it installed, so it's not going to show up. Once you've installed it, just hit apply and restart, and then it will restart. As for settings, we're going to do uh, Euler sampling steps of 30. We're going to do 512 steps to five, the denoise strength to 0 0.3, and I'm gonna be doing a very big upscale all the way up to a 4X upscale. Then in our prompt field, we're gonna to wanna to put in, I'm gonna be doing the anime girl school, uni school uniform setup. Uh, I was going for more of like a, you know, high school slice of life kind of uh, manga panel kind of thing. And then you wanna type in worst quality, low quality into your fields. Oh, a little thing to keep in mind guys, if your uh, automatic 111 Install looks different to mine. Do not worry, I'm just running a bunch of extensions and some other things. Uh, but if you wanna know how to install all the extensions I'm using and how to uh, really get yours kind of set up the way mine is, there'll be a link in the description below to my video where I basically explain how to set all this up. Uh, or you can just run it on Run Diffusion and you'll get the similar kind of setup to what I have with some extra things as well. So that's our prompt done. We've got this all set up. We're going to be using, yet again, Mistune. All the settings that I set here, what this is going to do is this is going to generate these types of characters for us. And the key thing you want to use is the simple background. Why do we want to do that? Well, the reason being is later on, we're going to use these really simple backgrounds to essentially cut out the background and keep the character in the frame. So let's hit generate and let's see what we get. And as you can see, this is the character generated for us. Let's use it. As for backgrounds, if you want to make uh, a background for your scene, just type in the tag word anime and whatever you want your background to be. I'm going to type in school and then you can hit this little switching thing here or the aspect ratio switch or just type it in manually, flip these around. This will turn it from a portrait image to a landscape image. And we've got more, uh, a little bit of a classroom set up. This is a little bit uh, wrong because the desks are facing this way when they should be facing this way and there's a bit of blending. That doesn't really matter though. I'm just using this as an example, so it's fine. We're just going to use it. But if you're going to actually make like an actual manga, you probably want to, or a natural manga, you probably want to uh, make the thing not messed up in the classroom. And then we're going to do a yard as well. Now, obviously you don't have to do the type of aesthetic I'm going for. You can literally do this with anything. You can make comics, you can make webtoons, you can do like battle ones and different things. Battle ones can be a little bit more difficult with high action stuff, um, purely for the fact that you have to set up like poses for things and stuff. But it's possible to do 3D poses and other posing in other ways. It is very possible to do it can just be a little bit finicky, so do keep that in mind. I'm going to be doing a video on Control Net though in the future that'll explain some basic things like this. Okay, so we have our anime schoolyard. And now that we have all the resources we need, we are going to head on over to Photoshop. And as you can see, this is the one that I put together before. These are all the files. It's a little bit messy. I, I would not eaten it up when I had the time, but we're going to create a new one so I can show you how I made this. Now, I will be using Photoshop in this video, but you can use other ed editors if you have one, but I'd strongly recommend using Photoshop because it's the easiest to do what I'm about to show you. But basically, you want to have anything that has the ability to make layers, rectangles, and then like clipping rectangles and typing and text and shapes and all that kind of stuff should be fine for doing this, but we're going to be making... Uh, a new document. Okay, so we're gonna be making a new document here. Basically what you wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to do a portrait 248 by 3508 with a resolution of 300. That's the settings you're gonna to wanna to use and leave everything else and we're just gonna create. Okay, so we now have our blank image here. You're gonna to wanna to unlock the layer 
here, it will say layer zero. There'll be like a lock button. You just click the lock button. You're then gonna wanna go over to the left-hand side of here, click your shape tool and then click the rectangle tool. You're gonna wanna do a little bit away from the inside of the border and just drag out a square or a rectangle. And you wanna make sure the fill is set to like a black kind of color. You can do this by simply clicking on your shape, going up here to the fill, clicking here, and then just choosing black. This can be any color, it's just easier to do with black, just cause it's a bit more visible and distinguishes between the white and the black. So you then wanna wanna press Control T on your keyboard to kind of resize the square and make it, uh, sorry, the rectangle, and make it kind of like more neat to the borders kind of want to make it the same kind of all sides round. Then what we're going to do is you're going to want to hold Alt on your keyboard and you'll notice that the cursor kind of changes. You're going to want to click on that rectangle we just made and drag it down to duplicate it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you have the second layer for the second rectangle selected. Press Control T and just drag down and make it bigger kind of thing. Now, the reason why we're doing this is we're basically just gonna make the panels and you'll see how we work this later. Now, this bit is a little bit more tricky to do, so um, it's a little bit hard to explain over video, but you'll kind of get the feel for this if you do it. Basically, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have the top layer selected. So for the top square, it's this one here, the first one created, or you can just click on the square itself. And then you're gonna select this little white arrow here. This is the direct select tool. And you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna double click and you'll notice that if you've done things right, there'll be little points at the edges of the square. This is probably a little bit difficult to see. What we're gonna do is you wanna hold shift, click on the point here and then just drag up and give it a slight angle. And then just click yes. That's gonna change the path of the square and make it look a little bit different. We're gonna click off the square and then double click on the bottom square. Sorry, select the layer first and then double click on the bottom square. And then we're gonna do the same thing, holding shift and then dragging up and making the line as even as possible in between. Now we have our manga panel set up. We can start adding our images in. Okay, so we now have all of our images. I'm gonna hide all three of them quickly first. And I'm gonna do the anime schoolyard first. So we're gonna do, and this is very, very important. You wanna make sure you have your layers kind of set up correctly you're gonna to wanna to grab this layer and drag it down to where it's above the top square. This is very important. You want it to just be one layer above the top square. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold Alt on your keyboard and in between these two layers where like the line is between separating them, you'll notice this little like box with the down facing arrow point comes up. You're gonna to wanna to click that and then click on where in the, just the line space. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna clip the image we made to the box. As you can see, it's clipped to the box, it's got the little diamond downward arrow and it's pushed to the side. This indicates that it's clipped to that box. Then we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the other image, make sure it's above our other rectangle. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing by holding Alt on our keyboard. That's gonna also clip there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Control T while selected on the layer that's our the little classroom image. And then we're gonna hold Shift and Alt to resize the image and make it you know a bit bigger and kind of fill out the box like so. Now, obviously you can spend a bit more time doing this and configuring the images. Uh, we're also gonna do is I'm gonna press Control T and I'm gonna go down here to flip horizontally to flip it, to make it a bit more, uh, make a bit more sense. As you can see, we've got our mangle panels set up now. Now, do keep in mind, you wanna tweak probably the images a lot better to make some this kind of look a lot nicer because this doesn't, these images don't really work too well together, uh, but you can play around with that in your own time. Yet again, with the layers, make sure that the image is a one space above the rectangle and you wanna have them all kind of separated like that. Because the problem is if I had, for example, this classroom image down here, it's not gonna work. You always wanna make sure it's above the square, one layer above the square you want it to do and you want it to clip to. So make sure you do that. All right, now let's do the character. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to select. We're gonna do select and then we're gonna click subject. This is gonna trying to attempt to select only the character in the scene. This is why we want the simple background. Now, as you can see, it's done actually a pretty damn good job of just selecting the character, but for whatever reason it doesn't, you can come over here to where this little wand tool is and then select the quick selection tool and you can add bits to your selection just by clicking. So for example, if I wanted to like add that little bit in there, I can do that, but I don't need to because it's actually selected everything pretty correctly. Thing you wanna do is you wanna right click select inverse, come over here where your character layer is, right click, and then click rasterize layer. 
You're then going to want to do here. You're then going to want to click on the image again and then click just the delete key on your keyboard. Now that's going to remove the entirety of the background of the image. As you can see, there's still some little bits here and there, but what we can do with that is we can just uh, touch them up with the magic wand. So you can just click and hold here to bring up this little context menu, click magic wand, and then just click in the spaces and just click delete. But for the most part, pretty easily done. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the character over to this side. I'm gonna drag him down a bit. Oh, sorry. If you ever need to deselect something, by the way, if you ever have lines, you can just press Control D and it'll deselect that area so it doesn't like uh, affect things. I'm gonna press Control T. I'm gonna scale up the character to make him like more pronounced. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we obviously wanna remove these bits around the border. There are a few different ways we can do this. Uh, but we're just going to do things a simple way. You can just come up here and select the rectangle margin tool and just kind of press hold alt to zoom in a bit. And what we're going to do is we're just going to remove this like bottom section just by dragging out a square. Try to do it as neatly as you can and just click the delete key on your keyboard. Same thing again. And there we go. Now their character is cropped to the frame. If for whatever reason, um, there's a little bit of an edge going over. You can always just click on the character and use your arrow keys to move them over a pixel at a time. Sorry if I was speaking to the mic a bit there to kind of neaten up the edges. Sorry if I just zoomed into a crotch and let me do that. And now we have our character in the scene. Now, in order to make the character itself a little bit more defined, I usually like to apply a drop shadow. You can do this by clicking the FX button here and then clicking drop shadow. Now, this is too much of a drop shadow, so I'm going to uncheck Use Global Light. I'm going to bring everything down to zero, and I'm going to bring this size just by highlighting and typing up to probably like a five each. Uh, now, let's do a little bit more. Let's do like 15. Uh, hold on. Maybe not. Maybe 10. <laughs> All right, that's good. So it's just like a little bit of an outline just to kind of make the character more pronounced. You don't have to do this. This is obviously something that's a personal taste. Now. Next thing first, if you're going to be making a manga, you probably want to have text boxes, right? So go back over here to your shape rectangle select tool, come up to the fill, click the color wheel or the color picker, move the little circle around here up to the very top corner to make white, or just type in F six times and it'll make white. Click OK, and then just draw out a box for our text box. We can do whatever we want. After that, you're going to press T on your keyboard, which brings up the text tool. And we're going to be using the font today, CC Wild Words. This font is basically used for most manga writings. It's a classic one that we used for manga panels. And we're going to click anywhere on the image. It's going to create our text. And I'm just going to say like text here. Alrighty, there we go. Now you're going to click the move tool and then just move it into wherever you want to put it. If you want to make the box smaller, you can click on the box layer, press control T and then just drag the box around. If you need to move the two layers around together, click on the first layer, hold shift, and then click on the second layer. So we can put this like up here. We could have like uh, another text layer if we wanted to. So remember, if you want to duplicate anything, you can hold alt on your keyboard to duplicate and then click and drag to move it around. And as you can see, that's kind of how we make manga panels. And then if you want to export it, you simply come up to here and click file. Export, you can have a quick export as a PNG or export as, which is what we're going to do. Let it kind of load. And do keep in mind, if you're exporting as a format for PNG, make sure you uncheck the transparency, because if you don't, all of this white border around the edges is going to become transparent. You can leave the rest of these settings and just hit export and save it to wherever you want to have it. I'm going to put mine into the manga panels thing. And that's it. We've made our first kind of manga. Obviously, you don't have to do this like uh, this character over the top as well. It was just a technique I wanted to show you. We can have them in the actual image itself. And yeah, guys, that's kind of it. That's how you can make manga panels with Photoshop and AI image generation if you wish to do so. I'll leave all the links to the resources I used in the description below if you wish to use, do so. Do keep in mind as well that Run Diffusion site I was using is a paid site. It is not free, but you can use Midjourney or any of the other free AIs or any local install you want to do this as well. But yeah. Anyways, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Leave a like, subscribe to channels if new. I'll see you guys in another time. Bye guys.